North East Tonight brought to you by Oil India Limited conquering newer horizons Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. Assam's Bodo heartland is full of hope with the signing of the new Bodo Accord on Monday, the third peace agreement involving groups in the community. The first was in 1993 when the Bodoland Autonomous Council Accord was signed, but it was a non-starter as the boundary of the council was not properly demarcated. The second one with the, was with the Bodo Liberation Tigers or BLT in 2003 that saw Hagrama Mohilari and his colleagues in the rebel group joining the mainstream after signing the peace agreement. The 2003 BLT Accord led to the creation of the BTC, but the leaders continued demanding a separate Bodoland stand, state. Now, after 17 years, the government has signed a phrase peace agreement, this time with all the remaining Bodo insurgent factions, all four from the NDFB. While the NDFB Progressive and the NDFB Ranjan Daimari factions were already engaged in peace negotiations with the government, the NDFB Swaragra faction was outside the purview of the peace process. Now, with the comprehensive peace deal signed and Union Home Minister Amit Shah saying the accord has prevented Assam's further division, it can be assumed that the Bodo groups who signed the deal has decided to give up their demand for a separate Bodoland state once and for all. How will this impact peace and security in the border dominated areas? Does this mean the curtains are finally down on insurgency in Assam's border heartland as well as the separate borderland state demand? Most importantly, how will this impact on politics in the border areas or the BTC area? So far, the BPF was occupying the major part of the political space in the border belt. Will there be a political turf war now between the BPF and the NDFB leaders who will soon join the mainstream of social life in the Bodo areas? Well, BPF leader Hagrama Mohilari has already tried to put the NDFB in the APSU in a tight spot by claiming that the decision of these organizations to permanently give up the Bodoland state demand was unfortunate. This indicates the BPF might still continue with the statehood demand in a bid to stay more politically relevant than the rest. Before we begin the discussions, I have with me the man of the moment, APSU President Pramod Boro from Kajol Gaon in Chirang District, where a grand welcome was accorded to the Bodo leaders after their return from New Delhi earlier today. Let's have, uh, we will have now one-to-one -one with uh, Pramod Boro. Pramod Boro, I would first like to have you welcome to the program. Let's have only Pramod Boro on the screen. Pramod Boro, well, congratulations on the signing of the Bodo Accord. Congratulations to you too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pramod Boro. You are the man of the moment. What is your first reaction? And do you think everything will be all right in the Bodo heartland now? Yes, I'm very much confident because uh, Bodo society as a whole, we have decided that there should be no more violence, there should be no more activity of arms in the society. We want peace, we want development, and uh, you can see uh, different fraction of NDB coming together. Although they were in different situation, they all are coming together. And we, the All Bodo Student Union, we are a democratic organization, we are a student body, we are a civil society. But we have taken that much of risks to join together to sign this accord. Uh, our only and only objective is to uh, ensure the permanent peace, to build permanent peace in the region so that uh, people of the region can develop like uh, as their wish. Uh, people can uh, uh, work anything as their wish and they can live as, as their wish. There should not be any fear among the people. Uh, there should not be any hatred and any kind of violence in the mind of the people. Uh, and we live in a, uh, in a, com uh, in a uh, complex uh, demography where uh, not only Bodo people are living, uh, there are so many communities are there, we are living together. Right. So uh, for long, long drawn arms movement, uh, they, they lose their confidence for some activities of violence 
and different, uh, you know, this kind of uh, the happening in the region. And we, at this moment, we are all people are happy along with our organizations and different org people because uh, Bodo land and this lower Assam and uh, this um, northern part of Assam is going to be totally peace and totally arm free after this accord. All right. Uh, that's very well said, uh, Pramod Boro. You have had a very busy days in the last couple of weeks, uh, particularly to the run-up to the uh, Bodo's Accord that was signed yesterday afternoon in New Delhi. Now you see, Pramod Boro, now everyone is happy. People in the rest of Assam are also happy. Now, what I'm going to say is that, you know, right at the beginning of the, right at the introduction of the Assam Accord, it has been made very clear that the territorial integration of Assam will remain intact. Now, this obviously means that there will be no separate borderland and we can, can we conclude now that the demand for a separate borderland is no longer there from the side of the border leaders? Uh, it is the, uh, it was the fear of the people of Assam and uh, Bodo people, uh, since uh, starting of the movement, uh, there was no intention to uh, destruct any community, destruct any society, uh, to oppose the right of any people, any community, any religion. But uh, there was misunderstanding in the course of movement that Bodo people uh, hate other people, Bodo people don't like other people, and Bodo people try to destabilize other people. So uh, everything come into light. Uh, everything come to know that there is no such intention uh, with the Bodo people. Bodo people want peace, Bodo people want development, and Bodo people want security of our culture and identity, as like the other people want to uh, uh, protect their culture and identity. All right, all right. Now, now, Mr. Pramod Boro, you see, insurgency has come to an end because in 2003 itself, the BLT had signed the accord. Now, all the four factions of the NDAB are signatories to the peace accord. There are no more militant groups uh, in the Bodo heartland. So we can say very well and safely that insurgency has come to an end. What about political development in the coming days? Uh, can we assume that new political parties will be formed? Would you say that BPF, Bodoland People's Front, which is the ruling party, will not be the only major force now? It will depend on the uh, people of the Bodoland region. Uh, I alone cannot uh, uh, say anything uh, about that yes. because uh, all Bodo Student Union is a uh, mass organization. Uh, Bodo people decide what Bodo, what uh, Bodo Student Union should do, and uh, on the matter of other uh, the arms groups, they will decide that their future course of action. I hope. Uh, they will also uh, think uh, everything positively and whatever positive development comes they will accept and uh, definitely everybody want there should be change in the politics also the political leaders who are leading this region they are not uh, able to deliver uh, the whatever people wish whatever people want so uh, there is some this kind of uh, uh, resentment are, uh, with the mind of the people so uh, in due course of time uh, I think it will be clear that uh, what uh, new things come up uh, in this process. All right. Uh, you know, uh, for the last 17 years since the signing of the BLT Accord in 2003, the BPF was the only major political force in the Bodo heartland. It almost had a monopoly. In the coming days, with the signing of the present uh, Bodo Accord, where four NDFB factions have signed, APSU has signed, other political uh, civil society groups have also signed, Obviously, it is no, no, no prizes for guessing. There will be new political formations. There will be new political equations in the Bodo heartland. So uh, do you think uh, there will be positive competition to the BPF now? Wazbirda, I will be happy to answer this question after one week. Today, after one week? Enjoy. Uh, we are going to have peace. Uh, a sustainable peace on our region, the uh, underground, uh, the, uh, the boys, uh, since last 34 years they were in the jungle, they were in the Myanmar, Bangladesh and different places and this accord giving an opportunity to meet their parents, meet their brothers and sisters. You also wanted this situation, I also wanted this situation. Yes. So Wazbirda, I'll be happy to answer this particular question after one week. 
All right, uh, Mr. Pramod Boro there, thank you very much for joining me <laughs> this uh, evening on Northeast tonight on a day uh, when all the leaders were given a rousing reception. There is absolute euphoria in the Bodo heartland. Thank you very much, Pramod Boro, for being talking to me on this day. All right, uh, you see, that was uh, Pramod uh, Boro, the APSU president, clearly the man of the moment uh, to begin the discussions. I am joined from Kajalgaon in Sirang district by top NDFB leader Gobinda Basumatari, one of the signatories of the new Bodo Accord. In Kokrajar, I have APSU General Secretary Kurumdao Wari. I also have on the show, I will be likely to be joined soon, Radha, former Assam Special DGP, Mr. Palla Bhattacharji, former MP Kirib Chalia. Uh, he has just uh, informed that he will not be able to join the show for some reason. Swapnanil Borwa is with me, political analyst and senior journalist and commentator Susanta Talukdar also with me in the studios. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. First of all, let me go to you, straight uh, to you, Mr. Govinda Basumatari in Kajal Gaon. Uh, Mr. Govinda Basumatari, congratulations to you. Your first reactions. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we are happy that uh, yesterday we have signed, uh, signed a third photo ac accord uh, between Governor of India, Governor of Assam and uh, Borough Movement Groups. It's really an uh, accord for peace and development. All right, all right. So, so uh, this is described, Mr. Basumutari, this is described as a comprehensive peace agreement. Do you think finally peace yes, is uh, going to come to the border signed. areas? All the four factions of NDP have signed, and including this, some civil societies. That is a broad-based broad uh, comprehensive agreement, and I, I hope uh, peace will prevail in the Borderland area uh, if, among the all communities uh, uh, as, a, as a result of this agreement. All right, Mr. Govinda Basumatari, I request you to be with me for some time. I will not de de delay you till the end of the program, but please bear with me. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Supnali Barwa, uh, how do you view uh, the entire signing of the new border court? Four uh, militant groups, NDFB factions have signed. There are no more militant groups left. It is certainly going to bring the curtains down and insurgency as far as the uh, Bodo areas are concerned. Well, I think I must congratulate uh, the Bodo leaders on the signing of the accord. For me personally, it's been a great experience having worked in what is now the Udalguri district at the start of the agitation in 87, 88, and then subsequently even in the Baska district now. So congratulations to all of them. I think a new beginning has been made. Uh, the greatest thing about the accord is that the it it's, it's proves the success of dialogue. You know, once you start right. talking to each other, the so many problems can be sorted out, and that way, I think it's an eye opener for all of us that uh, wherever there is any friction in Assam or in the northeast, the dialogue is one great way of serving the purpose Absolutely. of peace and prosperity. Absolutely. I'm coming to you, Mr. Susanta Talagdar. I'm now joined from Kokrajar by APSU General Secretary, Mr. Karamdao Wari. Mr. Wari, welcome to the program. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Yeah. What is your first reaction? How do you view the accord? Uh, first of all, I would like to correct that I am the Assistant General Secretary of All Borders Student Union. Oh, you are the Assistant General fact, Secretary. Lawrence Sorry for that. I apologize. Exactly, exactly. I apologize to you. You are the Assistant uh, okay. General Secretary. Yes. Okay. Yes. Carry on. Yes. So, see, All Borders Student Union, uh, as of now, after signing this accord, we are uh, very much hopeful that uh, the main integrity of peace in a region, which we are hopeful about, coming into a kind of phase of another strand of uh, peaceful region where uh, whole of India, whole of Assam and whole of Bodoland region will find. And we are looking forward that this settlement will bring better opportunities towards every uh, issues that has been raised throughout a movement and every issues that are underlying unresolved with the government of India and with the government of Assam. And so that is how we are hopeful that we all more we have seen that uh, as you all know that already we have uh, four factions of NDFB who have already uh, come to this settlement and that is one of the biggest sign of peace right. that we can see forward 
and all border students will work forward for that and uh, we Absolutely. are also uh, looking forward other subsidiaries of development into this region because we want to end every kind of misunderstandings with the other communities who are now into uh, disputes with small issues with uh, many other issues that are in conflict within them so that is how we want to look forward very true this settlement hold your thoughts is uh, for all for all communities right yes for all right. uh, aspects of development education social political culture and for every identity yes this will be focused towards protection in this region. Very true. I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Wari, yes. in a minute, Mr. Susantra Talukdar. Uh, you know, yes. uh, you see, now we all know that the curtains have come down on insurgency because BLT had signed accord in 2003, and now all the four factions of the NDAB are signatories to the accord, along with the APSU and other civil society groups. That means there is no more rebel group, insurgent group left in uh, outside the peace purview in the Bodo heartland. So one thing is clear that insurgency is over. Now, uh, the accord has also brought, as Mr. Karam Karamda Wari has said, uh, it will bring a lot of uh, developmental uh, measures have been drawn up in the accord, like higher education, educational institutions are coming up, a uh, lot of legislative and administrative powers will be increased, as number of seats are going up from 40 to 60, all that is fine. But how do you look at the days ahead as far as Bodo politics is concerned? Insurgency is over, but not politics. You know, so long in the last 17 years, we have been saying that Bodoland People's Front was at the forefront. They were almost had a monopoly. Do you think now there will be tough competition from other political formations which will definitely emerge in the Bodo heartland in the days ahead? How do you assess? Yeah, uh, I think I think the the, uh, the political dynamics within the Bodo uh, among the Bodo groups. I think that is going to take shape, uh, as Pramod Boro has said. He, uh, he, gave, he has even a, uh, given a hint to you. Uh, he has uh, agreed to come back to you after one week. Yes. So I think that the, the, he has dropped the broad hint, and, uh, and then uh, the new political formations are going to take place in uh, the BTR region. And then uh, uh, the, the, uh, we, are, we are not sure whether the BTC elections are going to take place or uh, we, there will be an, an interim arrangement for the new area. Right. <clears throat> so that we will have to watch out. But then uh, we, we can say that this new accord has articulated a new power sharing and governance model in the Northeast region. And, and it, it, it can be a, now a template or it might trigger aspirations in other autonomous council in the entire region, nine, nine uh, uh, councils under the sixth schedule. They, they but, might also but, like, but, yeah. But, yeah, I'll come back to you, but today, for the record, uh, viewers, and also to you, Susanta Talukdar, uh, the Assam Finance Minister, Mr. Hemant Abhishek Sharma, has today said that, you know, not only in the Bodo heartland, the seats of the council will be increased from 40 to 60, 60. but also in the autonomous councils in Karbianglong and NC Hills, the number of seats is going to go up. He has not specified how many, but yes, it is confirmed now that the number of seats in the Karbi Autonomous Council as well as the NC Hills Autonomous Council is also going to go up. Uh, before I come to you once again, Mr. Wari, uh, Mr. G let me go to Mr. Govinda Basumatari. Mr. Govinda Basumatari, how easy or difficult was it for you to reach the accord? You know, uh, after all, you have had uh, four factions were involved along with several civil society groups. There were a lot of people involved. A lot of consensus was necessary. How easy or difficult had the journey been for you? It was really very, very difficult, but uh, uh, since we are sincerely pressing the government about our uh, needs, our, about our shortage of rights, because we are struggling for our own rights, our rights for land, our rights for political, political uh, rights, and our rights for uh, identity. And uh, on these issues, we discussed the with the government of India for the last 14 years, and uh, as a result of this, uh, the government of India tried to understand our issues and our problems and they also realized that uh, the problem should be resolved. Otherwise, there will be no peace in the borough belt area. Right. Now, now, Mr. Basumatari, uh, you know, we know that insurgency is over, but politics, I was asking this to other, my other panelists, but insurgency is over, but politics is going to take a sharp turn. The council elections are also coming. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 
there will be uh, peace will prevail in, uh, in the area because uh, all the armed struggling factions are uh, signed uh, took part in this uh, border accord and after few days laying the arms ceremony will be held and but uh, political uh, struggle is will, will, will start because after a struggle all the issues all the rights we have got uh, through agreement will have to be implemented and for that uh, unless we get uh, the power political power we can implement all these uh, things so because of that uh, i think uh, since we, we are already for so many groups working together uh, there is a uppl a political party there is a apso all Parisians union and four factions of ndap so we will think about this together just to implement the all the rights and provisions uh, we have got through the accord very significant very statement, very, very, very significant very statement. I'll seek the com uh, command of my panelists in the studio, but let me go to Mr. Wari. Mr. Wari, you must have heard uh, NDFB leader Mr. Govinda Bosmatari saying that uh, the Bodo Accord has brought a lot of things for the Bodo people, but implementation is very important. And for proper implementation, he said, Political power is also extremely important. Unless you have political power, you cannot implement, implement properly whatever you have got. And now he has made it very clear. He has said APSU is there, UPPL, the political party is there. So how do you react? Or what do you think is going to happen in the days ahead? Will you join? Will all these people support the UPPL? Or will there be a new political party? Uh, APSU as an uh, independent organization will have this settlement one of as a political discourse is a difficult task so that we are also hopeful that in order to come to a commitment of uh, as Governor Sir said to implement all the, the settlement issues that has come over this settlement so to implement to overcome every issues we need to see that there is a very dynamic as already mentioned by one of a, one of the panelists and also we hope that APSU will always look forward for a very dynamic and very dedicated political uh, mainstream that will stick to these issues and stick to this uh, settlement that will hope in future to have all the fulfillments and every commitments that has been given to the people in respect to this context of settlement as well as with the other comprehensive ideas of development, comprehensive ideas of change that we want to see in the region. And so, in, uh, in again, we want to uh, build up the peace building process that is going to set an example which will reflect in the model of very different aspects of development through the settlement. So we also believe that this political discourse is definitely going to be a difficult task and difficult one where inclusively we all need to look and EPSU will always take care of this uh, politi politics part of interest where we need to support, we need to encourage, we need to hope that there is a better administration, there is a better governance and so we are always fighting. Absu is again right. always now, now, for let me, good governance. Now, now, Wari, is, now, yes. now, 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 Mr. Yes. Wari, Mr. Wari, for the last 17 years, it yes. was the BPF that was dominating Bodo politics, that was in power in the Bodo Council for the last 17 years. Now, do you think uh, the people still, the grievances have not been fulfilled? And are you saying that people are looking for a change? What are you exactly saying? We, we, are, we are looking that this is what our uh, repercussion after the movement that people definitely are looking for change and therefore people have agreed to these aspects, people have come to this level of understanding and they have consented towards coming into the settlement also that uh, definitely there has to be some change because whatever the BTC accord done by that and BLT had not able to fulfill in this region and therefore we have, into, we have been into a consecutive movement and so that movement uh, we have seen that people have really, in large numbers, people from every background, people from every community have consented that there has to be some change. And our change and aspiration towards separate state was an issue that we need to highlight, we need to come out, we need to come for a very separate setup. Right. And now this is an, another opportunity with this third accord that we need to see the change and okay. we need to have the better system because every lacunas and every corner of protest, every corner of... Uh, uh, misgovernance has been found, has been seen 
in this uh, present administration of the council. So therefore, we need this change. Okay. And that's why we are happy also, and we are looking forward for a dynamic political leadership in the uh, this proposed Bodoland Territory okay. region, which is being now into a new settlement. All right. I'll come back to you. Yes. Now, uh, this very significant statement yes. made by Mr. Wadi, the leader of the All Bodo Students Union, the Assistant General Secretary there, live from Kokrajar. Mm. Uh, you've heard <laughs> that, you know, uh, it's fine that 17 years a political, political party was ruling, but, uh, you know, there was an accord. But uh, he's saying that people are now expecting change because the new accord has brought in new dynamics and there are new promises made in the accord. So, therefore, uh, there is a change and he's expecting a dynamic political leadership to take charge. That is what he's saying. It's a clear indication yes, yes. that, uh, you know, the Borderland People's Front is definitely going to get a tough challenge from a new political formation that is emerging, Sopnil Borwa. What do you have to say? Yes, I think... Uh... If I may say it a bit crudely, the BPF uh, salad days of BPF are over. But then all accords have been always followed by the change of certain governments. As you have seen, whether it's the Mizo Accord, the Naga Accord, or the Tripura Accord, or the Assam Accord here. So it is necessary it will be. But there's one thing which, I, which is coming to my mind immediately, is that there has been a Boro Accord in between the government of state government of Assam and the government of India. Now I think they have decided, the, the borough parties have decided on their own to place before the government of India or the government of Assam a certain charter of demands. Yeah. Now there has been an indication of uh, how to implement that and how to get the rights uh, as envisaged in the agreement put into place. Where I feel is a certain agreement among the borough parties involved amongst themselves, they have to definitely work out some kind of a memorandum of understanding among the different factions themselves as to how to approach the governance issue once the issues are solved. So that is going to be a very major issue in the, as they say, next seven days is going to be celebrations, but the next month is going to very, be very critical as to which faction will, uh, how will they approach the achievement of the goals that has been envisaged in the accord. Okay. So now I think that uh, who's going to take the leadership, whether APSU is going to take the leadership, is something we look forward to because they are the cementing factor or they are the common factors. And now there will be... So, Sapnil Barwa, they are saying that, you know, the next seven days will be celebrations. After the next seven days, is going to be critical. Who will take over the lead because there are so many groups involved. And Sapnil Barwa, our panelist here, uh, uh, feels that it is it, it could be the all Bodo Students Union who will take the role of... Because they, have the, they are a, a critical cementing force which have brought all these people together. I think uh, I will ask this question to Mr. Wari in a short while. But Susanta Talukdar, how do you view? It's a very interesting comments made by both Mr. Govinda Bosmatari and Mr. Wari of the Alberto Students Union. Uh, they have clearly indicated that new political party is going to emerge uh, very uh, soon, and then they want this new political party to uh, take the charge of implementing the accord. But then we also have to keep in mind that uh, the exclusion of the 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 communities other than the boroughs in the accord has given rise to uh, discontentment within the BTR region. And uh, you, uh, the, the, the other uh, uh, communities comprising a large population of the BTR, uh, we must not lose sight of the, the political, uh, the role they might, uh, the organizations and uh, particularly the political leadership of uh, the yeah. uh, MP Novo Horonia and other groups, they are going to uh, the, the take uh, it, uh, ahead. And we also uh, uh, cannot rule out uh, Hagrama Mohilari uh, be, being the ruler for the past 17 years. And also an influence in uh, not only among so the you are saying you are saying that not, no one can be taken lightly at the no, moment. No, no. Is that it, simple it, it, terms? You are saying that. And, and, in and, simply uh, speaking, yes. Susanta Talukdar, simply yes. speaking, you are saying that neither Hagrama Mohilari nor the MP, mm. a sitting MP, can be taken lightly as far as political factors. I'll ask, take this question. But before that, let me ask. I'll have to go for a short break. Uh, but before that, uh, Mr. Govinda Basumatari, you know, all these groups signed the accord jointly. Now, my question is to you, Mr. Govinda Basumatari. All these groups signed the accord jointly, several groups. Now, are you all going to sit together? Are you all going to sit together in the next few days and form or decide on either forming a new political party or joining or lending your support to an already existing one? Mr. Basumatari. Actually, we are not thinking. We are not thinking about uh, forming a new political party because we have all, already uh, ex uh, there is one political party in our support 
So we are trying to work together with that existing political party. Okay, that is, I'll have to go for a break, but that is a very significant statement made by Govinda Basumatari. That is breaking news. Govinda Basumatari has said that they may not form a new political party because there is already an existing political party which is uh, supporting them. That is, I think he's talking about the UPPL headed by uh, UG Brahma. I think uh, he's already perhaps talking about the UPPL. We don't know. We'll have to come back for clarifications on that. But after this very short break, viewers, don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Let me go straight to Kokrajar. Uh, Mr. Wari, uh, you have heard uh, that, uh, you know, Mr. Govinda Basumatari has indicated, he has said that, you know, uh, there may not be a new political party because there is already a political party which is supporting all of you. Uh, so he is obviously hinting at the UPPL. Uh, so what do you have to say? Uh, all of you are obviously going to sit together and discuss this issue as to how will be the road ahead, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly, we'll all come together and because in the course of movement, we already had support of, and we have supported, we have backed UPPL also, and that is the idea that in the political discourse, we'll have to come back with all the like-minded and as well as the organizations now who have, who have come to the settlement, the factions of NDFB, right now the Govindo Sar and then other factions also we have already some communications that definitely there has to be a kind of new political discourse and that is how we are hopeful and uh, in the new, uh, in this new settlement that definitely the people uh, aspirations and the people expectations will also become uh, into a uh, aspiration of political change and political discourse that has to change in this region. Therefore, now, all Buddha Students Union will come definitely now, into this Mr. part Mr. Wari, organization. Mr. Wari, for a little yes. bit of more clarity, uh, has the all Buddha Students Union in the last uh, you know, days leading to the signing of the Bodo Accord, has the APSU been talking to all the NDFB groups as well as the civil society groups uh, and uh, are you going to continue with this if, if you have been already engaged in this exercise? APSU is always in this exercise and we are still uh, going to take up this initiative and we are, all, all Buddha Students Union will reach out to every organization, reach out to every intellectual, reach out to every civil societies and also we will also have a common understanding towards the idea of now as you have raised that in the new political discourse that will have this, will continue this initiative, will discuss even before the settlement we have communicated. As you all know, we are already uh, together, we had been going through with the NDAB Progressive and now we have uh, other factions who have already come back and with the Ranjan-led faction also we had communications and also when the Saurayagra faction had come, they also had communicated with us. Until now, we are under communication and because they have few more formalities before uh, laying down of arms or they have the formal uh, issues that with the government of India after the settlement. So very soon we so, are hopeful that we'll be coming into this discourse of discussion also. So, uh, uh, so you yes. see our panelist, political analyst, uh, you know, Sopnanil Barwa, uh, can we say that he is correct when he said that all Bodo Students Union has been the cementing force uh, earlier and now also in, the, in this very critical juncture when you have to move forward and, and, and take everybody along and get the Bodo Accord implemented, APSU will once again play the same role, the role of a cementing force. Wari. I suppose we yes, we will it. definitely try our level best and it is always the task and it is always the 
work of all border students union to come united to any uh, unresolved issues that we need to resolve and therefore this settlement is one of a determination one of a target that what people's expectation and what we have come to this settlement what we have agreed with the government of india with the government of assam that we need to have this into an action and therefore this action plan will definitely require the support and very much involvement of all border students union towards implementing and all border students union will in future will also strive hard that this implementation is done positively with the government of india and government of assam also because and that will also be very much part that we will expect the political right. discourse to be a very positive discourse absolutely which will definitely bring us right. the implementation of the settlement and absu will strive for that always right uh, now susanta talukdar before mm -hmm. i go to once again to mr gobinda basumatari i have to i have to uh, let mr gobinda basumatari go but i request you to hang on for some for some time uh, mm -hmm. susanta talukdar mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, it's fine that uh, mr wari has said uh, very categorically that uh, you know absu has been in touch that is has been the role of mm -hmm. reaching out to all the bodo groups all the ndf big groups they have mm -hmm. already been doing that exercise and now when all these groups have to uh, you know uh, transform themselves into a political role mm -hmm. in the days ahead ndfb will have to be disbanded that yes. is already mentioned in the accord sure. obviously yeah. uh, there will be no ndfb yes. uh, from a certain point no. of time they will disband themselves and they will form a political entity yeah. whether it is one single political entity whether everybody joins the uppl we don't know yeah. you know yeah. somebody might decide to form a new political party sure. but but do you think most of these groups will now jo now join the uppl which is because mr gobinda basumatari has very categorically stated a very veteran leader he has very categorically stated that will not form a new political party because one political party has already supported us True. now that means there will be a total change in leadership in the uppl itself uh, uh, there could be a change in the leadership and there there will also be a change in the political equation within the state Like, no, that, let us not talk yeah. about that. Let us let us, we, political equations in the state that will come at a later stage. Yeah. But my point is, first of all, first of all, will all the NDFB uh, factions or leaders, yeah. everybody may or may not join the UPPL. Some of them might try to form a new political party also. Right. But right. even if there is a lot of people might join the UPPL, that is what Mr. Govinda Bosumatari has indicated. True. True. Uh, so therefore, if that happens. there will be a there will be a major change in leadership within the uppl itself yes because uppl was the keep uh, was uh, playing a key role in this peace process as far as i know and uh, one one uh, its leader was one of the architects of this uh, peace the process the former mp yeah. uzi brahma was one of the former architects. top leader of the all border yeah. students union and they've been uh, in the uh, the ndp factions uh, leading the uh, participating in the statehood movement So yes, UPPL is going to be strengthened with, as indicated by uh, Mr. Boshmatari, and uh, also uh, the APSU uh, solidly behind UPPL in the, uh, for the past uh, years. So UPPL is going to uh, gain strength, uh, even if some NDF factions or leaders and supporters do not decide to join the, the political party. The eastern districts they'll have to make their presence felt yeah, much but more. But in, Baska, Udalguri, yeah, but 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 Right. I think now they'll have to slightly shift and make their presence and, and which in, also itself the, will require yeah, that no, uh, the no, UPPL I'll, 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 be I'll, changed. I'll, I'll go back to Mr. Wari, but before that, uh, Mr. Sopnil Barua, uh, you know, Mr. Sopnil Barua, you see, uh, what will be the equation uh, that Susanta was coming to that? Mm. Uh, but now the you cannot ignore the fact that you know uh, over the past 17 years, uh, I think. Uh, uh, Mr. Hagrama Mohilari has shown tremendous political acumen. Yes. He is a very astute mm -hmm. politician. He was, had been an ally of the Congress. He had been an ally of the BJP. He had the two national parties, which we, which which he has already tested success. Uh, he he had worked out. He had he had first hand experience of working both with the Congress as well as with the BJP. Now, what could he do? What is your assessment? Can he be completely brushed aside? Certainly not. I, as i had said in the first instance is that now the agreement has been reached with the governments yeah now within the borough factions themselves a certain agreement makes this makes it necessary because they must not be a divided house from day one so all the existing political factors or the players have to be taken into account and they must be pressurized to obey by the agreement that is finally no you are not answering my question no no my question my question is on hagrama mohilari being hagrama, an astute politician can we ignore him totally no you cannot ignore him and i think in the process which we are talking about is that 
आप सब विल डेफिनेटली रीच आउट टू हिम एंड हैव अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ रोल फॉर हिम इन द न्यू एस्टेब्लिशमेंट आल्सो ओके लेट अस सिंस मिस्टर वाड़ी इज देयर मिस्टर सपनेल बरवा थिंक्स दैट यू नो आप सब विल आल्सो रीच आउट टू द बोडोलैंड पीपल्स फ्रंट इज दैट द फैक्ट और डू यू थिंक दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन बिकॉज़ यू हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द द द पार्टी फॉर द लास्ट 17 इयर्स this uh, this in near future we don't hope for that likely situation and we don't see this likely situation of that idea of approaching and so that is another uh, but but if i may discourse, ask the question if i may put you a, if they, i may ask a direct, like a if dissenter. i may if i may ask a direct question to you if i may ask a direct question to you mr wadi you see hagrama mohilari and his party has been ruling bodo areas for the last 17 years he has been an astute politician he, uh, he had been he, aligned with the congress as well as the bjp can you completely ignore him can you take him so lightly there is no question of taking any political opponent light, lightly in politics so the mainstream politicians and the mainstream our party who will come forward will definitely decide into these matters and all border students union will hopefully see that there is a very positive angle towards this memorandum of settlement and we also hope that he has already assented to the settlement by being witness to the settlement and he himself has signed us and witness and therefore we are hopeful that see he has already given us a dawn that it is a dawn of new hope that he has already rejected his own his idea of btc settlement which he could not accomplish the okay, people but that's a very uh, that is a very interesting aspect. that's a very significant and interesting so, way of looking at so it that was uh, yeah. you know just a point <laughs> a i would like to make here is that uh, i think that in the new new dispensation we will see hagrama mam mohilari playing the role of the opposition and the other party being the ruling right. party right. i think let's that see, is how let's the, see at the end of the day people is king i always say this we don't know no, don't what know. happens in politics after all the ballot is secret and the people are the king we we'll have to wait how the bodo people decide we we'll have to wait uh, but mr mr let me go and uh, and mr govinda bosumatari you know we have been discussing the bpf has been in power for 17 years uh, you know are are, are you are you uh, saying now that bpf will definitely get stiff competition tough political competition mr bosumatari uh time will say yeah yeah time will say about that because uh, uh actually border people were dependent on bpf time time will obviously say yes uh, now mr basumatari what is your message to the people in the bodo areas today everyone is happy there is euphoria all around you have come from delhi uh, just after signing the accord what is your message to the bodo people uh during last 16 years we have seen that uh, they are not uh, working properly uh they cannot do for the development of the people so people are dissatisfied with them so there's thinking about the alternative so we we, we think we'll be pro- able to provide alternative against the bpf okay i'm coming to you susanta talukar mm-hmm. but uh, my final question to mr uh, gobinda bosumatari so from now on mr bosumatari there will be no fresh separate state demand by the bodo groups can we say that for sure there will be no separate state demand for bodo land or uh, bodo separate state demand can we say it for sure what do you have to say yeah yeah yes no 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 separation demand because we have got all the rights which are uh, actually available in a, in a state so uh, we we don't think uh, we need the state because, because we have already we have all the rights and provisions which we enjoy in our state okay mr bosmatari you are a busy man i would like to thank you at thank this you. stage thank, thank you very so much for joining me thank you thank you mr bosmatari now susanta so talukdar yes. uh, how do you wanted to say something actually no uh, i want to say that uh, the bpf is already aligned with the the ruling bjp in assam so uh, the equ- the equation i was referring to i mean the uh, if there is going to be a split in the boro uh, the polit- uh, uh, people on the basis of bpf and the uppl or whatever party new party takes place then the split will lead to uh, the interesting pol- uh, electoral uh, result not only within, within the the bts btc election but also the 2021 assembly elections i think 
the, it will have a, uh, a repercussion on uh, implication on the in this election results too. And uh, we also have to keep in mind that uh, the the uh, organizations uh, representing other communities, they are raising their voice against this uh, accord. Okay. And also, well, yeah. the Hagrama Mohilari by uh, the raising the, the the issue of the statehood. I mean, through his acquisition against the APSU. So the the although the the oh, yeah. signatories of the accord have may have not be uh, pers may not be pursuing the statehood demand. But we will not be surprised if uh, the, the BPF tomorrow comes up. Again, with a demand again. With the demand. So that is what he has said. Let me ask this to Mr. Wari. I am coming to you, Mr. Soplan Borua. Mr. Wari, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Govinda Bosomatari has categorically stated that since the present Bodo Accord, since the new Bodo Accord provides you all the facilities and powers like a full-fledged state, there is no need to demand for a separate state again. He has very category, you have heard it yourself. He has said that there will be no demand for a separate state. But on the eve of signing the accord, two days before the accord was signed, Hagrama Mohilari had told the media that the APSU and the NDAB has surrendered. They have sacrificed the interest of the Bodos by declaring that they will not demand a separate state once and for all. Does it not mean that now the BPF will demand a separate state, not you people? It may be his lip service on the Bodolan issue so far, as he has stated that, and there is no idea of that. Uh, EPSU has definitely, uh, every people in this region supports EPSU and EPSU goes by the wish of the people. And therefore, in subsequent period of time, that is the idea that as of now, as we have come to this settlement, we are determined to bring um, new inputs. We are determined to see the new development, new aspects of hopes and aspirations of the people. And that is how Govindo Sar has rightly said that at present, within the government of Assam, within the territory of Assam, and within this region as Bodolan territorial region, we are trying to bring and we are hopeful to bring through this new settlement that there will be a kind of new uh, hopes that will have a good initiative. And therefore, we feel that EPSU is likely, and again, we have to come back to a decision that uh, idea of formal decision towards the separate state demand that would be uh, either we uh, keep it aside for time being or either we come back or whether it will be in our own hearts as all every Bodo, as you know, every people in this region, as you know, that, yeah. that is one of the idea. Right. So what, what, what he meant, I have no idea that Hagrama Moiler how he concluded that EPSU is still <coughs> with the same leadership. We have signed this accord and EPSU still are, is hopeful that this is one of the initiative that we are bringing into this uh, peace initiative that right. uh, the now, entire uh, groups have come now, together. Before, and uh, I'm what running, is this idea of... Uh, I'm just, very quickly, I'm running short of time, Mr. Wadi. Uh, but my final question to you, Mr. Wadi, I'm running short of time. Uh, your leader, your president, Mr. Pramod Goro, uh, just before you joined the program, he told me that uh, wait for one week. We, uh, I was asking you the question about the new political formation. He said, I will be able to answer this clearly after one week. So uh, what, what is going to happen exactly. in one week's time? What could he mean? What is happening in exactly. one week? Exactly. You'll, you'll, you will definitely, definitely will come to know exactly as he stated. And we are also hopeful that as you come to know, we'll also come to know and See, everyone will come to know. We, and every, we, we are uh, very, we are very impatient to. people. <laughs> Mr. Wadi, we are very impatient. I am myself very impatient. My channel is extremely impatient for breaking stories. And I want you before one week again on this program. But now, uh, that... don't go away. Again on this program, I need you before the expiry of one week. Sapnil Borwa, your last comments. Uh, my last <laughs> comment was that, you know, the, the Boro Accord has not only raised aspirations among the Boro people, but I have seen recently is that even amongst the non-Boro people in the BTC area, or whatever is the new name that is going to be, uh, that enjoys... Boroland or, Territorial uh, Region. B BTR, BTR Region that a lot of people are expecting a change of attitude of the government, especially the BTR government in power, exactly. which is coming, as to how they will be dealt with. I think parallelly along with how the implementation of the accord is concerned, uh, APSU and the signatories of the accord will also simultaneously have to take into uh, consideration as to how to reach out to these non-borough people in the BTR 
area okay. and take okay. them into consideration. Right. I think the borough, right. I think the Ten agreement seconds. doesn't say that, but right. that uh, apparently Absolutely. is in the cards. Absolutely. Ten seconds. Uh, I, I, I think the, uh, Mr. Borua has raised a pertinent point uh, because the, uh, the share of the political power pie, that, that is quite important. And then uh, 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 the questions uh, you cannot avoid is what happens to the ST status of the Coast Rajbongsi and Adivasi people within the BTR region? And what, happens, what happens to the power uh, the the power uh, the, the power equation within the BTC region then, so these okay, questions we'll will confront the new new le new leadership. leadership. New okay, leadership. Uh, we'll have to wait and watch how things unfold. But Mr. Wadi, now at at the at, at of course right now it is time to celebrate. Celebration will go on late into the night today, isn't it? Yes, yes, huh? yes. We have also got a oh, massive mass good. gathering today at Khazulgao, where we had more than a lakh. People have come over to welcome this BTR accord. Yes. And we are hopeful that this will positively come forward with the people into the new dynamics of politics in this region also. Absolutely. And we are we are extremely happy with the new Bodo Accord. We are one piece in not just in Bodo areas, we want peace everywhere in the northeastern Entire. region. With that hope, I thank all my panelists exactly. for participating in this very engaging discussion and the viewers for watching the program. On this, I thank all my viewers as well as the panelists. Good night and goodbye. Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, conquering newer horizons.